Good morning, I'm Kristen Valetti and welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, March 12, 2013. Here's your SiliconANGLE Daily Roundup. Don't expect to see Firefox on iOS devices anytime soon. Speaking at the South by Southwest Interactive Mobile Browser Wars panel, Jay Sullivan, Mozilla's VP of Product, put the rumors to rest, stating that Mozilla's Firefox browser will never return to the iPhone so long as Apple continues to demonstrate what Sullivan calls an unfriendly attitude towards third-party browsers. As it stands now, Apple refuses to let users change the default browser, ensuring that Safari is used automatically in many circumstances. If Apple were to allow Firefox to use its sophisticated rendering and JavaScript engines in iOS, Mozilla would be willing to bring its browser back to Apple devices. Many observers say that's as likely to happen as Apple suddenly allowing Adobe's Flash on iOS devices. In the meantime, Mozilla has focused its efforts on Android devices as well as the recently announced Firefox OS. Publishing industry groups are fighting with Amazon over plans to control new top-level domains. Similar to .com or .edu, the new extensions, such as .book, pose a valuable Internet real estate. And Amazon hopes to claim as many of these domains as possible from ICANN, the nonprofit organization responsible for assigning such domains. Much of this started last year when ICANN started a process which allowed organizations to begin the process of serving as a domain registry. And though companies like Google, Microsoft, and Apple have all applied for the same domains, Amazon is particularly coming down under fire because of the large number of domains for which it has applied. The concern is that Amazon will simply be able to create a monopoly on certain domains, especially for ones like .book, which is currently under objection by the Association of American Publishers. Detractors claim that owning such domains will serve an enormous competitive advantage. However, Amazon argues that owning book.com is no different from owning .book and believes the concern of a monopoly is overstated. ICANN has yet to issue the new domains, but we expect to see a decision soon. PATH, the mobile-only social network, is under criticism for their latest update, which many are saying breaks the app's sense of intimacy. The new feature allows users to search for and message people that are not directly on their friends list. Though you're limited to accessing only friends of friends, some are regarding this latest feature as an invasion of privacy. Early adopters took to the PATH app due to its degree of security that users found refreshing over the more open Facebook. This latest update, however, seems to go in the opposite direction of what otherwise used to be PATH's most highly sought-after feature. Pinterest continues to focus on tools for businesses with Pinterest web analytics. Website owners frequently asked Pinterest what context people were pinning from their sites. The answer to that question, and much more, is available with the new data-rich analytics dashboard. At a glance, content creators can see how many people have pinned their content, how many people have seen that content on Pinterest, and how much traffic Pinterest sends back to their websites. The dashboard displays the information numerically and with line graphs, so website owners can quickly notice patterns and trends. Pinterest Web Analytics follows other tools previously introduced for businesses, including business accounts, pin it buttons, and board widgets. Content creators interested in these features can visit the Pinterest website and follow the steps to become a verified website. LinkedIn has acquired the newsreader app Pulse for upwards of $50 million. We reported the business-oriented social networking company's stellar financial report recently and discussed the company's efforts to move into content creation and aggregation. Buying Pulse strengthens their hand in that area. The Pulse app, available on Android, iOS, and the web, boasts 20 million users who read more than 10 million stories per day. This is the fourth major acquisition by LinkedIn. It follows the purchase of CardMunch, SlideShare, and Reportive. The strategy for Google Glass is beginning to take shape as Google reveals several new Google Glass apps. The technology was on display during the Project Glass developer panel at South by Southwest. The New York Times Glass app demonstrated how breaking news could be delivered hourly to a user's glass headset. A lookup feature was also shown, which allows users to see photos and headlines anytime they want. The Gmail app works similarly in that it sends new emails labeled as important to the Glass headset. 
The Evernote and Path apps demonstrated the simplicity of taking and sharing pictures with Google Glass. And as soon as the Mirror API becomes available, developers will be able to create their own apps for Google Glass. Users who want the best Netflix streaming video experience should use Google Fiber. That's according to the new Netflix ISP Speed Index website. Don't worry if you don't have access to Google Fiber, you can see how other ISPs measure up. Netflix is displaying the average performance of ISPs using data from over 33 million subscribers from many different countries, including the US, Mexico, Ireland, the UK, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and Finland. The index is clearly meant to highlight the best ISPs for streaming video and shame the ISPs who don't provide enough bandwidth for a quality streaming video experience. As Netflix grows in popularity, users might be tempted to switch internet service providers if a competing service is shown by Netflix to have a better track record for streaming video. This is just another example of how businesses are using big data to empower their users. Do people who own iPhones use them to watch more videos than people who own Android phones? The answer is yes, and twice as much. At least that is according to web video company Uyala. It's necessary to note that Uyala's report doesn't measure all web videos everywhere, only the videos that it serves up through its own services and player. However, Uyala does handle a lot of video, boasting some 200 million unique viewers worldwide. Given the recent high numbers in Android device shipments versus iOS shipments for 2012, if people keep choosing Android over Apple at that pace, then the number of smartphone users watching videos on the Android base should get bigger. The report does, however, beg the question as to whether or not there might be something about Android itself that discourages video use. Welcome to the Steambox era. The Piston, a $1,000 gaming PC in the form of a console, has arrived. Not to be confused with Valve's hardware ambitions, the Piston is a third-party prototype box created by XI3. The Linux-based Piston has an integrated AMD chip with a 3.2 GHz quad-core processing unit and a 7000 series Radeon GPU. It supports up to three monitors, including one HDMI output. The piston demonstrates the difficult position for the Steam Box. Priced at $1,000, it can't compete with the cost of current generation consoles, yet as a gaming PC, it's only capable of mediocre game performance. The small form factor, however, does give it some appeal, as it might make the console a popular choice for gamers who are looking to ditch their massive gaming towers and transition to a living room environment. And that's your SiliconANGLE Daily Roundup for Tuesday, March 12, 2013. For in-depth breaking analysis and cutting-edge information on tech innovation, join us daily at News Desk here on SiliconANGLE TV.